What up African world, it's Home Team here and welcome back to another video of African history, culture, and worldview. And welcome back to my series, Wisdom from the Continent, where I take African proverbs and discover how it parallels with African history. By supporting this channel on Patreon, you're helping in the creation of these videos and supporting this content. If you'd like access to full courses and sources, or you simply want to show your support, you may do so by clicking the Patreon link in the description box below. The African proverb I'll be using today comes to us from the Igbo people of Nigeria. The Igbo people live primarily in southeastern Nigeria. Traditionally, they were organized into several decentralized patriarchal units without a hierarchical political structure. In this way, the Igbo became a very unique group because other Africans around them like the Yoruba and the Hausa, tended to be a bit more centralized. The Igbo from the onset had an interesting way of forming their socio-political structure. Some scholars suggest that the Igbo are known for having the most democratic political system in all of Africa. The Igbo's rare form of governance perhaps informs the following proverb. A bird that flies off the earth and lands on an anthill is still on the ground. Now with all my wisdom of the continent videos, I definitely want you guys to share your own thoughts about what these proverbs may mean, but I'll give you my take. I interpret this Igbo proverb to be a sort of warning against either symbolic victories or meaningless socio-economic exchanges. From my view, the bird puts in the effort of leaving the ground, hoping to advance in some way. He then finds something he considers to be an improvement from his original position, the anthill. But in actuality, he's still technically on the ground. I think this is a very simple proverb that packs such a powerful message. I believe it really encapsulates a lot of the ills concerning African history. From an African historical lens, this Igbo proverb is exposing the unequal exchange that African kingdoms participated in for centuries, the exchange of random things for human capital. It also exposes the extensive history of various African ethnic groups aligning with European powers to take out more powerful African ethnic groups. On one end, many of these Africans who traded human life for weaponry or other items thought they were advancing their kingdom, but in actuality, they were not only depopulating regions, but they were underdeveloping the entire region, not only leaving it unprotected, but leaving the intellectual capacity bankrupt as young, capable African minds were used for the advancement of other nations. Also, as some African ethnic groups joined Europeans to take out larger or more powerful African ethnic groups, surely they thought this was their ticket to empowerment and advancement. But as we all have learned, it most certainly was not. It was a betrayal to the sovereignty of the region, its independence from foreign domination. They temporarily upgraded the status of their kingdom by taking out more powerful ethnic groups but in the long run, all the Africans lost complete control over the rich resources the continent offered. They could no longer profit economically from this unequal exchange. It was not at all sustainable. Various African groups chose temporary satisfaction over long-term empowerment. To be fair, we also have to look at it from a contextual lens. African diversity really overwhelmed the continent. Many of us are proud of the diversity present in Africa today but in those times, it was perhaps the worst reality for some African people. The virtual non-existence of any unified identity is the primary cause for the swallowing up of Africa by foreign nations, and the constant state of survival Africans were put under having to defend themselves from slave raids or the ambition of other African or European powers really must have blurred their focus on what could have been a wiser path. In essence, Africans partnered with Europeans in multiple ways, thinking that they've advanced, but as we now know, they merely left the earth just to find the symbolic high ground of the anthill. Not only did they remain on earth, but that anthill gradually caved in, putting them in an even worse predicament. Even though there are a ton of examples that speak to this Igbo proverb throughout African history, I'll just use an example from the Congo Empire as it concerns unequal exchange. The Mwene Congo, or the Kings of Congo, seemed very interested in the so-called goods and services of the Portuguese, but mostly their Christian religion. 
If we're to be honest, the Congo elite traded human lives just to have access to a sort of Christian brotherhood with the Portuguese, and the Portuguese advancing their own national interests took full advantage of this. One Congo king named Mvemba Nzinga became increasingly overwhelmed at how the Portuguese were illegally stealing Bakongo citizens, even when he made provisions for illegal trade in slaves. After he realized the deception, unfortunately, it was too late. Each day, the traders are kidnapping our people, children of this country, sons of our nobles and vassals, even people of our own family. This corruption and depravity are so widespread that our land is entirely depopulated. We need in this kingdom only priests and school teachers, and no merchandise unless it is wine and flour for mass. It is our wish that this kingdom not be a place for the trade or transport of slaves. Many of our subjects eagerly lust after Portuguese merchandise that your subjects have brought into our domains. To satisfy this inordinate appetite, they seize many of our black free subjects. They sell them. After having taken these prisoners to the coast secretly or at night, as soon as the captives are in the hands of white men, they are branded with a red hot iron. The poor naive Mvemba participated in this unequal exchange for far too long and could not at all close the gate of destruction he let loose on his people. Another example from Congo is the participation of the Mbangala troops in the Portuguese ranks against the Congo Empire. The Mbangala were essentially like the Zulus of the Congo region. They were very skilled warriors and veterans of warfare. Some scholars suggest that they were a sort of rogue group of Africans who formed a military unit. The Mbangala were actually feared by many other Africans in the region, and their aid against the Congo Empire aligning with the Portuguese was absolutely devastating. The Portuguese quickly realized the value of aligning themselves with the Mbangala against the powerful Congo Empire. This union over time destroyed the Congo Empire as the Mbangala and the Portuguese consistently worked together to undermine the most powerful African state in the region. One can only imagine the symbolic trinkets the Mbangala received in helping the Portuguese dismantle the Congo Empire. I think we can learn a lot from the Igbo proverb and avoid the mistakes our ancestors made on the continent. In our society, unfortunately, we still have this ancestral tendency, if you will, to celebrate symbolism, all the while remaining on the anthill. In many ways, this disposition seems to manifest itself politically as it concerns our advancement or empowerment as a group. Anyway, I'm hoping that we can learn from our past mistakes and take this Igbo proverb to heart. Well, I'm all out, guys. If you like these videos and want to help in its continued production, consider supporting the home team on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace. Hey, hey.